I didn't appreciate the way Skip Bayless emasculated Brother Shannon. I have my issues with Shannon, but I didn't like it. And Shannon Sharp, if you listening to me, my brother, I'm not here to criticize today. I want you to leave that show. Skip cannot survive without you, Shannon. Skip cannot survive without you, Shannon. What is he going to do? Bring Ernest Steen up there to take your place? What is Skip Bayless going to bring Ernest Steen up there to replace Shannon Sharp? Ernest Steen can't do what Shannon do. Shannon is intelligent. Shannon is articulate. He researches well. He speaks very clearly. Skip Bayless cannot survive without Shannon Sharp. And after him telling Shannon to put his glasses back on while Shannon was angry, him telling Shannon to put his glasses back on while Shannon was angry was unacceptable. Skip should leave. Excuse me. Shannon should leave. Shannon can get his own show. You don't need that old racist. Tell him to bring Ernestine up there. Tell Skip to bring Ernestine up there to replace you, Shannon. But Shannon, you need to get your own show, my brother. That's from one brother to another. Go team up with Stephen A. Go somewhere else. But I want Shannon Sharp off of that show. I didn't appreciate that. That was an insult. And when you insult any black man, you insult all black men. When you insult any black man, you insult all black men. When you insult any black man, you insult all black men. Skip Bayless, you owe Shannon Sharp an apology on national TV. Skip Bayless, you earn Shannon Sharp an apology on national TV. Skip Bayless, you owe Shannon Sharp an apology on national TV. I don't care who was mad about what I said about Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is a bigot and a racist. He was back in 1957 and he is right now. I don't give a damn about Dak Prescott, Michael Irvin or anybody else who want to defend that racist. Listen to me. I understand my brother Stephen A. Smith has responded to me. I understand my brother Stephen A. Smith has responded to me. I understand my brother Stephen A. Smith. I'm going to I haven't heard the response. I'm going to listen to Stephen A. He's still my brother. I'm going to listen to Stephen A. and see what he has to say. And if I feel the need to respond, if I feel the need to respond, I will. Me and Stephen A. Smith sat right across each other on a flight to Atlanta about a year ago. He didn't speak to me. I didn't speak to him. He knew who I was. I knew who he was. No shame, no blame. He represents the power structure. I represent the coming power structure, the global African power structure. If Negroes don't want lashes, stop acting like a Negro pen. It's real simple. If you don't want lashes, stop acting like a European. Somebody sent me a picture of the New York Knicks Christmas party. Did anybody catch a glimpse of the photo of the New York Knicks Christmas party? I don't know what the hell is going up. What's going on at Madison Square Garden? Somebody gets Spike Lee on the phone. I don't know what's going on up in New York City. But that New York Knicks Christmas party looked like a mixed race mixer social. That's what it looks like to me. That was a snow bunny bazaar. That's what that was. Every Negro in the picture had a snow bunny. And the one black woman in the picture had a snow puppy. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. And these the same people who want reparations for our ancestors' enslavement? Wait a minute. Time out. Time out. Time out. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me we out here making babies with red, brown, yellow, and white women? And we want reparations. 
So what you're basically telling me is you want reparations so you can give it over to your yellow baby mama. You want my ancestors' reparations so you can give it to your white baby mama. You want my ancestors' reparations so you can give it to your brown baby mama. You want my ancestors' reparations. This is why our generation don't deserve reparations. This is exactly why I am opposed to the dissemination of reparations for black people in 21st century America. We are a fraud. All these black men with babies outside the race and we're going to get ancestor reparations and give it to all these non-black women. Harriet Tubman turning in her grave. Harriet Tubman is turning in her grave. Anna Julia Cooper is turning in her grave. Sojourner Truth is turning in her grave. Fannie Lou Hamer is turning in her grave. Ida B. Wells is turning in her grave. Betty Shabazz, Coretta Scott King, Amy Jakes Garvey, is Anna Douglas, they turning in their grave. They turn y'all want reparations so y'all can pay child support and alimony to your non African ex wives and baby moms. Listen to me. I want y'all to go to all the reparations groups and I want y'all to ask them this question for Dr. Umar What is your position on reparations for Snow Bunny Crisis survivors? What is your position on reparations for black men and black women who are married to non-Africans? What is your position on reparations for black men and black women who are dating, cohabitating, engaged, married, or making babies with non-African women? I want to know. Because if they are okay with reparations going to Snow Bunny survivors... If they are okay with reparations going to black men and black women who date, marry, and procreate out the race, they are okay with our ancestors' reparations being ripped off by the non-African community. I'm talking facts right now. Don't come to me with no reparations talk unless you're really ready to talk. Don't come to me with no reparations talk unless you're really ready to talk. Don't come to me with no reparations talk unless you really ready to talk. Y'all know my position. You get nothing from reparations. Nothing at all. If you dating, sleeping, engaged to, marrying, or procreating with Nana, you don't get none of that. Slavery was an all black thing. And reparations will be an all black thing. Now, let me end with this Deion Sanders piece real quick. If you don't understand military science, you don't understand University of Colorado, Deion Sanders controversy. The University of Colorado controversy with Deion Sanders. The University of Colorado controversy with Deion Sanders can be explained real simply in military science. This was military science. Deion is at a HBCU. University of Colorado only has 1% black students. Deion Sanders, by being at Jackson State, was threatening the white power structure's monopoly on black athletes. Listen to me. Military science. Milit I'm, I'm coming at you. This is why we teach in military science at FDMG. This is why we teach in military science at FDMG. This is hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal. The re I believe that the white power structure of America got the University of Colorado to recruit Dion away from the HBCU. Listen, listen. This is bigger than football. This is bigger than football. This is bigger than football. Dion at Jackson State was a threat 
to the Division I basketball and football monopoly over the top black athletes. Dion was undermining the establishment. And because they knew he was in love with money, they said, we got to stop this before it becomes a movement. Dion was one man, but it was about to become a movement. Dion was one man, but it was about to become one movement. Dion was one man, but it was about to become one movement. Dion was going to influence other ex-NFL NBA greats to do the same thing. It's only a matter of time before a re retired NBA player goes and coaches a HBCU basketball team. They couldn't let that happen, y'all. The NBA could not. The Division One, they could not let an NBA great go and coach an HBCU. They couldn't let more black NFL greats come and coach the HBCUs because they were undermining the monopoly that the white schools have on the black athletes. You're talking billions of dollars. So Deion Sanders allowed himself to be recruited away for money. And in doing that, Deion Sanders has just re-energized the black athlete's focus on going to a PWI. I think I can drop the mic right there. I think I could drop the mic right there. I think I could drop the mic right there. I said, Deion Sanders has re-energized. He had black athletes looking at HBCUs. Deion Sanders had black athletes looking at HBCUs in mass for the first time in a long time. And now all that attention that HBCUs was getting with Deion is going right back to the his predominantly white college. All that attention that Dion was giving to HBCUs is going right back to the predominantly white institution. And that's why I love my brother. I respect my brother Dion Sanders. But that's why his move must be interpreted from a military perspective as treason and betrayal. It might have been better if he never went to Jackson State at all now. It might have been better if he never went to Jackson State at all now. Because the message that Deion Sanders abandoning Jackson State for a 99% white campus, the message in Deion Sanders abandoning Jackson State for a 99% black campus, the message to black athletes is the white schools are still better. Not only are they better to play at, they're better to coach at. And I heard Dion took some HBCU coaches with him to Colorado. And I heard he took some players from Jackson State to Colorado. So if that's not betrayal, not only did you leave, you took players with you and then you went to other HBCUs and stole coaches away for a white college in Colorado that has never done nothing for black people and now they're going to use Deion Sanders black talent they're going to use Deion Sanders black skin they're going to use Deion Sanders to make hundreds of millions of dollars and when they're done Sucking Dion dry. When they're done sucking Dion dry, they're gonna drop his ass. They're gonna drop his ass off. I don't want to hear about his office got broken into. That's unfortunate. His car got broken into. That's unfortunate. But if you black living in America, you've already been through that. That's no excuse to abandon a black college. You Negroes are sick. You have no loyalty to your race. Trying to use the fact that somebody stole something out of his office. Somebody stole something out of his car. So that's an excuse to abandon a black college and go to a white school. Give me a break. Give me a break.
So was he supposed to accept the abuse at Jackson State? Anytime you deal with black people, you suffer abuse. He's going to be abused at the University of Colorado, but you're not going to hear about it. Deion Sanders is going to be mistreated at the University of Colorado, but I bet you he won't say a word. I bet you he won't. I bet you he's already dealt with racism and he only been there a few weeks. I bet you Deion Sanders has already dealt with racism at the University of Colorado and he only been there a few weeks. Get out of my face with that. Just be honest. You have no loyalty to anything black. I don't know why you Negroes make excuses. Just be honest and tell the truth. You don't have loyalty to anything black. If you need to reach me, 215-989-9858. Do not call me. I don't answer the phone. Do not call me. I don't answer the phone. Do not call me. I don't answer the phone. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858.